Hi there and welcome to another PSC Tuts Plus Spoon Fed Photoshop tutorial. I'm Gavin Steele and this week we're going to be revisiting creating a knife in Photoshop by Chill Design and here is our final product right here. We're going to be creating this knife. It's got a pretty cool kind of blade effect here and a little leather handle and some gold around the rim there. And all the steps as per usual are over at the site psd.tutsplus.com. Do check out the original tutorial, there will be a link um, in the screencast, do check it out, some fine detail of why different processes were chosen and so on. I'm just going to go through the steps so we can create um, the final product. Do forgive me today if there's a bit of sound outside, we have motorbikes going past for a street race and we have um, some building work going on but please bear with me. So let's load up Photoshop, I've got an 800 by 800 pixel canvas here. Just give yourself enough space to create this blade. And I've also got a horizontal line there in the middle. I'm just going to use this as I draw my pen. I've also um, pen, my knife. I've also got a label on my new layer as knife, so we can identify it. And I'm in the pen tool at the minute using the path. And I'm going to start just drawing out my uh, knife. Let's click in our center line here. We're going to come up at an angle to about here. And we're going to come up and in. And we're going to just start to angle our blade to pull up and then finally click up there, hold down alt, click on the top and click on the bottom and there we have our blade. Now what you can do is come back into our direct select tool, click up here on the path and you can play around with this angle to you know maybe just bring the knife out a bit more, a bit more of a chopping knife or something like that, just to get your blade just how you want it. But for now, that's pretty good for me. So I'm going to fill that with a color. P on the keyboard takes me back to my pen tool, and I'm going to just select my color first, just a dark gray or a mid gray, actually quite a light gray. Click on OK, right click inside, and we're going to go to fill our path, and use a foreground color click on OK and that's going to fill that in there. So there we have our knife. Double click on our knife layer, we're going to bring up our uh, layer styles and in our blending options we're going to apply a gradient overlay. So that's just down here on the left, make sure you've got that checked and highlighted. And we're going to start with having it set to normal, we're going to have the opacity set to 100 and then the gradient we're going to use is going to be a custom gradient. Just want to make sure can see that okay so the first color we need is going to be b0 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 click on okay and then the second just bring that up the second color we're going to use df 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 third color going to be F, 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 F. Fourth color is going to be the same as the second color. So I'm just going to drop this out and create another copy of that and just bring it over to the right hand side like so. And then the fifth color, our last color, is going to be 88888. And click on OK. So now we need to think about the positioning of these. We want just over to the right hand side, somewhere around 30, 32, white in the middle. And that's on the end. And again, we want these to be evenly spaced. So I'm just going to bring this over, put that at 50, like so. OK, click on OK. Make sure you've got a line with the layer set. We've got it set to linear. We're going to reduce our angle to 80. And we're going to scale this to 100, and we can click on OK. And there we have our little shine there. OK, now with the pen tool selected again, we're going to draw a little shape in here. We're going to create this little line. If we come back to our final product, we're going to create this line that comes right down the middle of the blade. So back into Photoshop. So what we need to think about is using the pen tool on our knife layer, we're going to start about here, somewhere close to the middle of the blade. And then just come up all the way around, this doesn't really matter, around here. Okay, and then when we come down the middle, we're going to arch this like 
like so. And again, come down and finish that off. Then go back into our direct selection tool and we're just going to play around with this little circle here. I'm also going to hold down Z and we're just going to zoom in on this area just so we can get a bit of finer control. Okay, so I'm just fidgeting with this. Okay, that's not too bad. Just gonna bring it over and like so. That looks pretty good. And then again, just zoom back out. Okay. And that looks pretty good. So once you've got that um, drawn out with your pen tool, still in the pen tool, press Command E. That's gonna turn. Oops. I'm sorry. Right click, make that a selection, click on OK. Command J, we're going to duplicate that. We're going to call this Knife 2. And then on that layer, we're going to apply a couple of little effects. Like we did before, let's double click on that layer. We're going to just turn off this gradient overlay for now. Head up to Drop Shadow first. Have Drop Shadow set to Normal. We're going to choose White for our color. Then our opacity is going to be 50%, 120 is fine, we're not going to use global light so we can uncheck that. Our distance is going to be 1 and our size is going to be 1. Our contour is fine and that's fine, we're going to come to inner shadow down here. We're going to set that to multiply, black, reduce it down to 50. The angle is going to be 60 and again we're not going to use our global light so we can uncheck that. We're going to set our distance to 2 and our size to 2. And then the contour again, all of that is fine. And then finally we're going to apply gradient overlay. So the gradient overlay needs to be set to normal, 100%. We're going to come in here and we're going to play around with these colors. The first color is going to be C5, C6, C8. Second color is going to be D4, D4, D4. Third color is going to be FA, FA, FA. And the fourth color is going to be the same as the second one, which was DF, DF, DF. I'm sorry, that's not right. Let's go back in. We changed that, didn't we? 4D, 4D, 4D. Mm, no. D4, D4, D4. Click on OK. And our last color is going to be 7C, 7D, 81. Click on OK. And again, we need to think about the positioning of these. We're just going to move this over to the right. So let's bring this over like so. Bring the white over. So we get something like that. Let's click on OK. 100% for our scale. 80 degrees for the angle is all fine. And you can have a look. And we've already started to create a pretty good looking blade. Let's click on OK. Now the next thing to do is we're going to apply um, some style to that again. We're going to apply the roughness to our blade. And to do that, on Knife 2, make sure you've got this layer selected. We're going to hit Command J. We're going to duplicate that layer and then we're going to delete um, its layer style and we're going to rename it Knife 3. So do that and right click on the layer, come down to Clear Layer Style, select that and we're just going to get a normal, a normal layer. Okay, so with that we're going to command click on Knife 3 just so we get that selection there. And then once we've got that selection we're going to head up to Filter, Noise. And then inside noise, we're going to hit add noise. 
Let me bring this over here. Okay, so with add noise set, we're going to set it to 400. 400%, we're going to have it set to Gaussian and monochromatic. And then we're going to click on OK. Then we're going to head up to filter, blur, and we're going to hit motion blur. And then we're going to set motion blur to about minus 20. And we're going to have a distance of 30. OK, so I'm just going to move this to the right just so we can see the kind of effect that that's having. Now, that's fine, but I think I just want to increase distance a bit more. That's a little bit too much. OK, and then click on OK. All right, now we need to change the um, the overlay here. Sorry, we need to set this to overlay, so click on overlay. And you can just see it just adds just a subtle difference. I bring the opacity down to about 40%, just around this mark. Command-D to deselect, and let's just zoom in and have a look at that. And it's a really nice um, kind of edge there that we've created along here. And it just gives a hint of maybe brushed metal or something like that, which is uh, pretty cool. Let me just fix my canvas here. OK, so we're looking pretty good. And our knife's looking sharp, but we can just add just a little bit of a touch down this edge of the blade just to give that, you know, that impression of a that the knife's just been sharped and this edge here is particularly sharp and a lot sharper than this edge on the right hand side. So I remove that guide, it looks pretty flat and this kind of looks pretty flat. So to do that we're going to grab our knife two layer and then again using the pen tool we're going to draw our path. So we're going to start right here down at the bottom, about there, come out, Remember, it doesn't matter if we come all the way along here. I'm just going to drag my canvas down like so, so I've got this room at the top, and then I'm going to click right on this top point, like so, and then I'm going to come down my blade, let's alt click on that last point, come down my blade, nice and thin and close, I'm going to alt click again, And just using the pen and the bend in the pen tool, so we get something like so. So it's going to be a really, really fine edge. And then once again, make that a selection. So you right click in there, click on make a selection, click on OK, and we get our marching ants. And then we're going to hit Command J to duplicate that layer. So now we have a layer all on its own, just that thin little bit. And then with it duplicated, we're going to play around with it now. So let's rename this Knife 4. OK. And I'm going to bring it above Knife 3. I'm going to right click, clear the layer styles for that layer. And again, you can really see it now. It doesn't matter if it's not a perfect um, fit there, because when you file knives, when you sharpen them, there's going to be a little bit wavy anyway as you use that stone to sharpen them down. So a bit of realism there for you, but it doesn't have to be a perfect crisp line. So once we've done that, we've renamed it um, Knife 4. So the next thing to do is move it on top of Knife 3 in our layer stack over here. And then we're going to fill it with a white color. So we can command and um, select that layer and fill it with white like so command deselect and then we can reduce the opacity down to about 70% maybe a little bit less, I'm going to go for a little bit less and that looks pretty good always good just to zoom out have a look at how it's going to look from a distance, and that might be a little bit faint. So I'm just going to bring that up. 
just a touch, 45, 50%, somewhere around there, that looks pretty good. Okay, next thing to do, let's change to our move tool, is we're gonna select our knife layer, like so. We're also gonna select knife um, one and two. Unfortunately, I didn't name, name those, so let's just close them up, like so. And hit Command G, that's gonna stick them in a group. I'm gonna duplicate this group. I always like to do this just so I've got a, oops, just so I've got a copy, so I don't do that, I don't delete them. Turn off the original layer and then hit Command D just to merge down that layer. So now you can see all of that work we've done is all on one layer. We're gonna to start to move on to work on this little gap in this area in here, this little kink that we made. So once you've merged them, we're gonna rename this our silver knife, like so. And then once we've done that, we're gonna create a new layer and we're gonna call this our hole. And again, we're gonna use our pen tool and we're gonna draw a shape in here. So I'm gonna zoom in, like so. P on the keyboard is gonna bring up your pen tool and I'm gonna select about here, come up here, come around here. Then I'm gonna alt click and then just finish that up like so. Now, if you don't if you're not happy with these sharp edges, just play around with the pen tool, bending and dragging, you know, try and get the effect that you're looking for. In fact, I'm not too happy about how sharp they are. So let's see if we just bring that up, oh, that's better. Okay, that's a little bit better. So, next thing to do once you've created our hole is we're gonna fill this with any color. So right click, fill the path. Um, I'm gonna fill it with black and click on okay. Once you've filled it, keep the selection um, of our hole. So right click, make a selection. So keep that selection. Then we're gonna choose our knife and we're going to hit delete, like so. If I turn that layer off, you can see now that we've cut out that area and white is showing through below. Then we're going to select our rectangular marquee tool. We're going to press the down key a couple of times. Um, one, uh, press it once at a time just to move the selection. So let me bring that selection down. So we're going to press, grab that. We're gonna press down one, two, three, like so. And then we're gonna press delete again. But this time on hole, press delete, and then we can deselect. Now it doesn't show us anything just yet, but um, it will do in a second. Okay, I should have maybe just go back, just move that down a couple of nudges further and hit delete there. Okay, we start, we can now get this edge coming through on our blade and it fades perfectly as if this is the inside of the thickness of the blade and this is the bottom part of the blade. And let's zoom out and have a look. Okay, and we're getting this really nice inner shadow there, a really nice effect. And we could leave it like that or because I chose black, it looks pretty, you know, it looks, it looks like it could work. But we're going to come in and we're going to grab our gradient overlay tool. And we're going to have that set to normal, 100%. And we're going to set our gradient up like so. The first color we're going to be using is going to be 494949. Second we're going to be using is DDDDD. And the last color it's going to be AD, AD, AD. Click on OK. And then we're going to just move this over just a touch to the right here. That looks pretty good. Move that over to there. That looks fine. Click on OK. We're going to have that angle set to 0, scale set to 100%, and click on OK. And now when we zoom in, 
can see the effect of that. And it would be darker here and it would be lighter here. And this area will just be slightly darkening as it comes over and around the bend. And let's zoom out. And again, it's just a really nice, um, just subtle touch there to add that shadow to the inside of our blade. Okay, next thing to do is to work on our handle. So I'm just going to zoom out. Okay, I haven't left myself with a lot of room for my handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of this. Command G, Control G on a PC to group it. And I'm just going to call that knife blade for now. And V on the keyboard to select the move tool. I'm just going to move it just straight up like so. And then maybe just zoom in again. Bring my canvas back up here. And again, we can start to use this area here to work on our knife. Don't worry about the blade. It's still there. You just can't see it on the canvas. So just like we did before, we're going to use the pen tool to create the handle. The first thing we need to do is to create a new layer on top of all of the others. P on the keyboard is going to select your pen tool. And then using the pen tool, we're going to try and draw our grip. So I'm going to start up here. Come straight down our handle. And the bottom of the blade. And then we're going to come pretty much straight down to, let's say, about here. And again, the important thing is to get these uh, points down because we can start to play around with them with the direct select tool uh, a little bit later on. So we've come down here. I'm going to another click just here. Okay, and then we're going to start to come around. Like so. Going to come up here. Just push that out a little bit so the handle's going to come down. It's going to come in. It's going to come out and up and around. Alt and finish it off. So it's a pretty stubby little handle there and it's pretty fat but because I've already got the points already laid out I can go back in and we can select some of these and just bring them down so we get a longer handle there and you might think that this point here is a little bit too sharp so again we can just drag this just play around with it Bring it up like so, and in fact, we can bring these points in, down, click away, and we can start to see the grip forming. And I'm going to come down to the bottom down here, I'm going to select these two, maybe just bring that out a little bit more. Okay, so it's just a little tweaking here and there just to get that grip coming up. I'm pretty happy with that. Once you've got it um, how you want it, the next thing to do is to fill it. So again, with the pen tool selected, right click and we're going to fill our path. And let's choose a color. Let's just grab a light gray. And click on OK and OK. OK, now we need to apply some layer styles to the grip, just like we did with our blade. Let's head over, double click on that new layer. And the first one we're going to apply is going to be a gradient overlay. So have that selected. And our gradient overlay, we're going to have that set to multiply. So let's click Multiply from the drop-down list. Opacity, we're going to reduce down to 10%. We're not going to use... Um, I'm sorry, we're going to come onto a gradient overlay in a second. Drop shadow to start with. Multiply set, black, reduce that down to 10%. Now we can uncheck our global light and have that set to minus 90. We're going to reduce our distance down to 2 and our size down to 2. 
contour is fine and our noise is fine then we're going to come down to our gradient overlay and the gradient overlay is going to be set to normal it's going to be up at 100 percent so i need to change that back and then we're going to set these colors now we're going to start off setting the gold colors first so the gradient we need is going to be a gold gradient so let's click inside here and start to create that the first color that we're going to use is going to be f4 dc 7e then we're going to grab another one we're going to grab this one's going to be dc b 0 and our third is going to be FED325 and another and again you can see why it's really useful to be saving these <coughs> excuse me in in your swatches so that you can always come back to them this one's going to be triple F 3C4 and our fifth is going to be FFE 785 then we're going to have C09 A02 and then finally our last color is going to be FFD E5B Okay, so we've got the colors in place. We now need to think about this gradient. I'm going to bring this second to last one over to the right. Till we get something like that. Then that's fine there. We're going to move these over. Like so. And again, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to click on OK. We're going to set it to linear. Check align with layer. We're going to set the angle to zero and 100% for the scale. OK, and click on OK. And now you can see that gold bit just starting to take shape. To just reinforce the effect, we're going to hit Command J to create a new layer. We're going to call this. Um, golden hilt. I'm going to come back to this layer and just call that hilt. Okay, so on this golden hilt layer, we're going to delete our layer style. So right click, come down to clear layer styles. So we should just have that normal um, thin gray. And then we're going to place it just over to the left. So V on the keyboard, and then we're just going to nudge this down. So you can see just moving this left and down to about there. That looks pretty good. I'm going to bring it below my hilt layer so you can see it's going to form this bottom half of our hand here. And again, just going to keep nudging that, nudge it left, bring, keep bringing it down. Okay, that looks pretty good. So once you've nudged that into place, the next thing we need to do is to create a new layer between our hilt and our golden hilt. So create that new layer now. And we're going to call this golden hilt 2. And we can hit enter. Then we're going to use the pen tool and we're going to draw a little shape in here. And basically it's going to connect these two together. So grab the pen tool zoom in on the little join area up here bring that over like so and I'm going to start here and I'm going to come around here it can be pretty rough coming around and then we're going to come down to about here And then we're just going to follow the shape all the way up to here. And then once you've got that selection, the next thing we need to do is remove this, select, this area on the left-hand side 
of that hilt layer. Now something to note here is if I fill this now, if I right click inside and go to fill my path and we click on OK and I turn off the other layers, you can see that my path has been added to that previous path and we get this all oh, this handle as well as this. We don't actually want that. So I'm going to come back and just undo that a second. So I'm going to quickly redraw um, that path. I'm going to lock those other layers, which I should have done prior. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to lock it, grab that, just lock it quickly. And I'm just going to delete that path. Okay, so then on this new golden hilt layer, I'm going to start here and just roughly I'm going to come around here because it's all all hidden behind here. Just come down here and then to about here. Alt click. And just create something that looks a bit like that. Then I can right click fill that path, click on OK, and now you can see it's just that area, it's not the whole knife as well. And then I can unlock that layer and unlock that layer. So, our golden, uh, golden Hilt 2 layer. We need to use this to get rid of this left-hand side over here. And it needs to look like it's joining, that this is the bottom of that blade and the end of the thickness at the top of the handle. Grab our razor tool, bring that up. And oops, select the right layer. We can just delete this back now. Like so. Gonna come away. Okay, it looks pretty good. Um, just gonna go back, just grab that area again, zoom in, just constantly adjusting, making sure everything lines up perfectly. That area there doesn't quite line up. So I'm gonna grab my direct, direct selection tool and I'm just gonna bring that over like so, make sure we fill that again, just to catch that area there, and then zoom out, gonna move down, have a look at this area down here, zoom in, see it's just off, so we're gonna get a little joint there, so again, just gonna bring this over, like so, zoom out, Bring this back onto the screen. Like so. Then grab that bottom layer, grab my eraser tool, and now when I get rid of all of this, hmm, what I'm finding is just when I'm erasing and being a little bit too hasty down the bottom down there. So, just gonna zoom in and make sure my eraser has a nice hard edge. Like so. Now, I'm pretty sure I made sure that lined up. I think I've gone, gone back a stage too far. Let me just grab that. Quickly bring that over. Let me double check this top bit. Nope, that seems to be fine. Grab my eraser. Hmm. Let me refill. Gotta keep going. That's it. So, I didn't refill after I did that. And then when we erased. There we go. Okay, gotta fix them on the fly. Let's get rid of this. We can zoom out a little bit. Increase the size of our brush. Much better. Okay, double click on that new layer that we created, that Golden Hilt 2, and we're going to apply another gradient, <coughs> excuse me, another gradient overlay. Set that to normal, 100%, and let's just quickly add this gradient. Double click on your first color. 
we're going to have that set to A4 8 3000 or 300 sorry click on OK add a second color this color is going to be FD E278 click on OK grab another color and this one's going to be FFF 4C5 and lastly we're going to have EA B C zero zero and click on OK. So we want to bring the last one over just a little bit. We're going to have these two just around the middle, maybe just off. Bring this one over as whoops. Bring this one over to about there. That looks pretty good. Let's click on OK. Then we need to make sure we've got an angle of 135 degrees and our scale is going to be set to 100 and click on OK and then pen tool hit enter get rid of that and let's zoom out and have a look and it's starting to look pretty good it does look like the under part of that looks a little sharp but it works and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that and we're going to head down to the bottom now and we're going to do a very similar um, thing to the bottom but all of that the bit in the middle don't worry about that we're going to cover that up with the leather the leather strap so we're going to grab pen tool and we're going to join these two now it's going to create a new layer in between these and it's going to start I'd say roughly about here just going to come across here to about here then it's going to come down to here and then we're going to come across like so okay and then we're going to right click in there and we're going to fill that path click on OK and hit enter. We're just creating that join there, just making that join look a little bit more, you know, a little bit smoother for the bottom half of this pen, of this knife. Sorry, I keep calling it a pen. And let's zoom out and have a look. Okay, I think it's looking pretty good. We're ready for that leather now to cover up this area here. So let's add that now. Head up to File, click on Open, and we're going to grab an image. A texture for our handle. Now I haven't got the leather used in the tutorial, um, so let me just cancel that. But I do have a, a nice grip texture. I'm going to bring that in here, and I got that from uh, this site that I use quite a lot. It's called TextureLovers.com, and we're going to be using this texture right here. And they've got textures for all different kinds of things, inspiration on textures, and it's a really, really useful and great resource. And I'm sure if you search hard enough, you can find the leather um, used on the tutorial. But I'm going to go with this um, just for the tutorial. The steps are exactly the same um, as before. I'm just going to, such a large um, texture here, which is brilliant. I'm just going to grab a selection of that. I'm pretty sure that's going to be enough. V on the keyboard and I'm just going to move that into our document and it's not enough so this image might actually fit just actually it does fit just fine going to bring that above all our others and put that in place command T and I'm just going to scale it just a little bit because I want the grain to be thick enough that we can actually see it and see the effect that it's taking okay so let me just move um, this texture lovers site out of the way that's just transforming that texture for me and I can close down the original bring this one back over here so once we've done that and we've got our um, our texture in place the next thing we need to do is hold command and we're gonna select our hilt shape here okay once we've done that, we can come down here and just check it, just see how it's going to look. Don't worry about this area here just yet. And let's have a look a little bit closer. Let's zoom in and see that texture. 
Okay, so it's kind of a rubbery texture which might work in the kitchen, I don't know. Um, but it looks okay in place, so I'm going to undo that little uh, mask and deselect. I'm just going to start to apply that to the whole handle. Let's grab our hilt layers, come down here, let's group them. I'm going to call this group Hilt. I'm going to duplicate that group, bring it down here to New Layer, and then Command-D, I'm going to merge that group. Now I can Command-Select, Command-Click on that thumbnail, come back up to our texture, and then I can mask it out. Or I can hit um, Command-J to create a duplicate of that. So Command-J on the keyboard. Turn off our texture layer. Let's zoom out just a little bit so we can see what we've done. And you can see now that it's applied that texture to the whole of that area. Okay, and we can rename this Texture Hilt and click on OK. The next thing that we need to do is we're going to grab that selection we did before for our gold, and that's why I keep everything in my groups. I'm going to come down here. It's not that one, it's not that one. In fact, what I can do is, we don't have to use that if you've already merged it. We can just grab our pen tool and then roughly, we can just come around the area that we want to be gold. So I'm gonna come straight across here. I'm gonna come down here and this area here pretty much. So I'm gonna come along to about here, and then I'm going to come down here, like so, come out and around. Then I can go right click, make that a selection, click on OK, and we can, oops, Command Shift I to invert, and then we can mask out that little bit, and we get the golden bit of our handle. And that's about the right size, that's okay. It looks pretty good. Okay, now we're going to move on and we're going to start to, <coughs> excuse me, use our dodge and burn tools and we're going to start to shape up this handle because at the minute it's a little bit too flat. So what we need to do is we're going to use our dodge tool first or and our uh, burn tool as we go. So let's just start with the dodge tool. Let's set the dodge to between 30 and 40, somewhere in there. Uh, sorry, 50% exposure. I'm looking at the brush size. And the brush size anywhere between 30 to 40 pixels. So I'm going to set mine to 30 to see how big that looks. Okay, it's not massive. Let's grab 40. And nice smooth brush. So I'm going to bring the hardness right down. And let's move that over. I'm going to just increase my brush size just a bit, I just like to see, there we go. So around 250 for me. And we've got our exposure set 50, 51%, something like that. Uh, we've got black and white selected. And I'm just gonna darken this side of the handle. I'm gonna increase my brush a little bit more. And we're just stroking down this right hand side. and make sure you're actually on the layer, not on the uh, mask itself. Okay, so that's lightening that. Just wanna Command Z that. And I'm just gonna lighten just a touch at the top. So just there, see that little grippy area there. And I'm gonna come down here, down this little join. And I'm just stroking as I come down. I'm using my pen tablet, but you should be able to. We're just going to use, you can use your mouse, just come down here. Okay, then I'm going to flip to the burn tool. And I'm going to set burn to the same kind of brush we're going to use, but our exposure again, we're going to bring down to um, around 50%, something like that. And again, I'm going to increase my brush size, kind of darken just down here. like so, 
looks really going to dark bit of grip there. Come up under here. See, and then those white bits, they just start to act as highlights just around the grip and kind of make it start to feel like it's 3D. And I'm going to go back to my dodge tool and going to come in around here. Just going to reduce the exposure a little bit. Just lighten up this part of our grip under here. Okay. And that looks pretty good. And we can just keep going, darkening and lightening areas. Darken that bit down the bottom. And with this particular texture that I've used, it's quite dark already. But you only need to put little highlights here or there just to get the effect that you want. And just keep flicking between your dodge tool. Just create the highlights for where the light might be hitting. Okay, then come back. And then use the burn tool just to shape that a little bit. Like so. That looks pretty good. Doesn't look perfect, but it looks pretty good. I'm going to come back and just grab my dodge tool, just lighten this area up here. Again, just really light strokes. I'm just creating that kind of 3D grip effect. You could spend all day doing that. I'm going to zoom in now just on this top bit up here. And we're looking at this join going along here. Okay. I'm not oh, when I've used the brush tool, you can see over here I've brought back some of this mask. So I'm going to grab this, just grab my brush tool. Bring it down. I don't think we've thought, oh, we do have that path. Grab that selection, come back, and just going to paint that back in. Like so. Come on, deselect. Okay, so we're going to create the um, this little line now, this little join of where our leather or our rubber, whatever you're using for your texture, joins up with the gold. So the first thing we need to do is set our brush. So head over to the brush tool. We're going to set it to two pixels. It's going to be a hard brush, so bring up the percentage all the way to 100%. Pass it in, I'm going to put all the way up to 100% as well. And then I'm going to grab the uh, rectangle tool, and we're going to draw out an area around here. In fact, I'm just going to use my pen tool, and I'm going to come along this path. Like so. So just match that path, alt-click, come down here, there's a slight bend because alt-click it's forming there. And then because we've set our brush already and we're on black, we can right-click on that and we can go to stroke the path. Use the brush, don't use simulate pressure click on OK. I'm just going to undo that quickly, create a new layer for this, and then right click, stroke path, click on OK, hit enter, and we're, st oh, we're starting to see the line, but unfortunately it's in grey. Didn't change that colour there. So we've still got our path selected, make sure you got black, come back to your brush, I'm going to increase my brush to, let's try four pixels, pen tool, right click, and stroke the path, click on OK, hit enter, and you can see we've got that join. Unfortunately, it's a little bit high, so I'll just see if I can nudge that down. That's a little bit better. We get that thicker blue line there, just going along. Okay, it's not, I'm looking at it, zoom out, have a look at you know how it looks in the whole grand scheme of things. It's not a bold enough line there, so I'm just gonna zoom straight back in. Let's go in again, and I'm going to come back till we've got that path, 
and go back into my brush tool and I'm going to set that to 12 pixels pen tool right click stroke the path click on OK let's have a look at how that looks that's a little bit better let's double click on that layer now and we're going to come to drop shadow we're going to set this to screen change the color to white click on OK we're going to have that set at 75% we're not going to use our global light and we're going to set it to a minus 90 of an angle 2 for distance and size and that angle is done the contour is fine click on OK and that's just going to provide a little highlight down the bottom let's go back in drop shadow we might need to increase the size so I'm going to move this to the side and I'm just going to increase the size I'm going to double it up to 4 just having a look 8 there we go that looks a bit better a little bit thicker that's it and I'm just going to drop the opacity just to about 60, 67, something like that. So distance is 8. Size. Again, I'm just going to pump that up to about 6. And just playing with the settings. Click on OK. Said, and let's zoom out. And it just adds a really nice little highlight and darkness there that join between the gold and the rubber handle the rubber handle itself and we're just going to zoom in now on this last little bit on this gold we're just going to keep working on our gold bit here and we're going to duplicate our golden hilt if i can find you okay so it's this layer here command j on the keyboard to duplicate that. We're going to call this um, Noise Hilt. And then hold down your Command or Control key. Click on the Golden Hilt to get that as a selection. Then we're going to go to Filter, Noise. And in Noise, we're going to go to Add Noise. And we're going to select somewhere around 400 uh, Gaussian Monochromatic. And uh, looks pretty good click on OK then when you've got that we're going to go to filter blur and we're going to set our blur just to normal blur OK and then we're going to change it to overlay and we can reduce the opacity down way down to around 15 somewhere like that I'm going to leave mine up around the 30s I think I really like that textured kind of look command D to deselect zoom out Let's zoom right out here, like so. I'm going to grab all of these layers. Group them, stick them into another group. Sorry, uh, duplicate that group. That way I've always got a backup of those files. Photoshop's just slowing right down on me there. Okay, turn off the original. Merge those layers. Command T. I can bring this in now. I'm going to have to scale it just a little bit. Like so. Hit enter. Okay, so while that transforms, you can see we've got our finished knife here. Admittedly, the handle isn't perfect, and the shape's just a little bit off, but I think it's pretty good. I think the main, the mainstay with this tutorial is the blade. I think the tips on creating the blade are really, really good, and you can work on the handle. You can add a double knife or anything like that, but overall, I just think the blade, it looks really good. When you zoom right in on it, I mean, it looks like a blade. It looks like a knife. It looks like brushed steel and just a really really nice effect and a really great um, tutorial so yeah that's the knife tutorial by Chill Design and you can check that out over at psd.tutsplus.com I'm Gavin Steele I hope you enjoyed that screencast and I hope to see you in the video section leaving lots of comments very very soon thank you very much